Not only will episode 9 bring a return of some of our favorite legacy characters like Luke, Leia, and Lando, but also the sequel trilogy characters and 8 new characters entering into this movie. This is Mike Zero here. If you guys are new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe to see future Star Wars content. Now we do know that both J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio will be doing big things with this movie that they are really trying to go to the next level when it comes to Star Wars Episode 9 in the sequel trilogy. In order to satisfy all Star Wars fans alike, whether it's new, casual, hardcore fans, fans that are dedicated to the video games or the TV shows like Star Wars Rebels, they are really trying to get everybody in on Episode 9. Now what's really interesting about this film is the fact that JJ is bringing in eight new characters in this movie and it may seem very excessive to a lot of you guys out there and I totally understand that and it's one reason why I always bring up that this movie has got to be a whole lot longer than that of The Last Jedi and we heard about this lightly before in the past that this movie is said to be the longest Star Wars film in history so I think that is very much needed anyways but looking at everything here these past couple of weeks or so we've been learning more about this film when it comes to some of the set leaks, the set designs, the concept art and storyboard descriptions, one of which could very well give us a huge hint at Ahsoka Tano being in Star Wars Episode 9. Now, specifically a description of what appears to be a pair of Resistance fighters with Maz Kanata and crew on board of a ship. In the background is a Torguta that deeply resembles Ahsoka Tano. In her hand, she is holding a cylindrical object that could very well be a lightsaber hilt and one of the sabers fans saw in Star Wars Rebels. Another description shows an Earth-like planet with Maz Kanata's ship hovering over the surface that could be the planet Shili, the home of Ahsoka Tano. So this is very interesting stuff for sure. Now in case you guys had no idea, a Tugruta is the species of Ahsoka Tano and other characters that are like her that we have seen before in the past with other Star Wars content. So I'm not quite sure if you know we are going to the planet Shili. Now Shili is the home world of Ahsoka Tano. Now if you're bringing back Ahsoka in episode 9, this is one thing that I believe needs to be done is you got to bring back Ashley to do the voiceover work in order to really match up the continuity. Now sure this would be a live action version of Ahsoka so if they do bring her in they may have to get somebody else to actually do the voice because it would be a live action character. However, if it's a motion capture actor who's going to be playing an animated Ahsoka Tano, then they could bring in Ashley to do the voiceover work. But nonetheless, guys, very interesting stuff for sure is because you guys may have heard just about two months ago that apparently JJ and Chris Terrio would not only be tying all nine movies into one big movie here, but also there will be some Star Wars Rebels ties in episode nine. And that really left a lot of people wondering is Ezra Bridger coming into play? Are we going to see, uh, you know, Grand Admiral Thrawn? Or could it very well be now Ahsoka Tano? The fact that one of the descriptions goes over a, a pair of resistance fighters with Maz Kanata on that pirate ship that floats in space. I'm sure that you guys have heard about that before in the past. And on board is the same exact species of Ahsoka holding what appears to be a lightsaber hilt. This could very well be a huge hint at Ahsoka's return in Episode 9. Now, like I say, I think that tying Episode 9 into Star Wars Rebels is a great idea. And it's really nice to think that Disney and Lucasfilm are really trying to tie everything together into this one big movie in order to make it a mega event. Again, a lot of people, including Forbes, are saying that The Last Jedi Backlash and the Solo A Star Wars Story box office results are not going to hurt the Episode 9 box office itself. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but a lot of movies that were actually going to release near Episode 9 are now bailing out. They're shifting their dates and they're pretty much running away from Episode 9, giving Episode 9, you know, more power to get more money. Now, of course, that all depends on how good this movie really is going to be. It's all going to be about word of mouth. A lot of the hardcore Star Wars fans are the people that see these movies four, five, six, seven times. 
And I think that you have to please the hardcore fans in order for a movie to really make a lot of mo a lot of money when it comes to a Star Wars film. It's why the past films were so successful, just because, well, a lot of people saw those movies repeatedly because I think it all had to do with The Last Jedi backlash. A lot of people didn't feel like going to go ahead and see Solo, a Star Wars story. Not everybody necessarily was asking for a Han Solo film. Uh, but with that being said, Solo was an enjoyable movie. But I think that Disney and Lucasfilm need to step their game up, and they're doing this with Episode 9, and they are viewing this film as a course correction technique. But anyways guys, I would really love to hear your input about all of this below in the comments section. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel i thank you all so very much for the kind support and i'll catch you guys next time